In our first story, President Ekufuado has announced further easing of restrictions on places of worship with effect from August 1, 2020. In his address to the nation on Sunday evening, the president expressed his deepest appreciation to religious leaders for their strict adherence to safety protocols, which so far have prevented any known outbreaks since they restarted church services. According to him, the time restriction on meetings has been extended from one hour per service to two. To further extensive consultation, Government has taken the decision to embark upon the implementation of phase two of the easing of restrictions in the following sectors of our national life. Our churches and mosques have been open for prayers and services for the past seven weeks, adhering to 25% occupancy or up to 100 congregants over a time duration of up to one hour per service. I extend my deepest appreciation to our religious leaders for their strict adherence to the safety protocols, which have prevented unmean known outbreaks since they restarted their services. I have sorely missed going to church, as I'm sure many others have. I'm therefore very happy to announce that in consultation with our church leaders from 1st August 2020, the restrictions on the number of congregants worshipping at a time in church will be lifted, with the length of worship extended from one to two hours per service. Church leaders who are desirous of implementing this enhanced easing directive must ensure the congregants wear face masks at all times in the one metre social distancing rule is scrupulously applied. These same guidelines apply to worship in our mosques. With greater number of congregants likely to return for worship, I would respectfully ask the religious leaders to pay even greater attention to the fresh air ventilation of their premises, rather than relying on the use of air conditioning. The president also lifted restrictions on commercial vehicles to resume operations at full capacity. In consultation with the ministers of transport and aviation and the leadership of transport operators, government has taken the decision to lift the restrictions in the transport sector and allow for full capacity in our domestic airplanes, taxis, trotters and buses. The wearing of masks in vehicles and aircrafts and the maintenance of enhanced hygiene protocols remain mandatory. Away from the address, Member of Parliament Health Committee, Dr. Sebastian Sandari, is urging Ghanaians to embrace COVID-19 vaccines when one becomes available. About 150 vaccines are currently under development all over the world, but none by an African institution. And the World Health Organization is estimating the first batch of vaccines could be ready by early next year. Despite a push by anti-vaccine campaigners, Dr. Sundari says vaccines remain the only viable option to prevent spread of coronavirus. When it comes to Africa, especially Sub-Saharan Africa, because we are disadvantaged, because we are, we are you know, poor, because we do not really have the resources, vaccine tends to be the one that will do the magic for us. Vaccine, because once we are able to prevent the infection, then we are saving resources. So I would support vaccine that will come out as early as possible and I will urge my own government and governments all over the world to really invest in such a measure because it will be effective way of dealing with COVID-19 in the world. And, and for you, how should government of Ghana be approaching it now that the development is ongoing? You know none is happening here in Africa apart, apart from South Africa agreeing to participate in clinical trials of the one developed in 
Oxford University. But generally, African governments and Ghana, how should we be approaching it in terms of ensuring that when these vaccines become available, people can get access to it as, as quickly as possible? Rightly so. And that is the role that our government should play to ensure that um, whatever it takes for us to be part of the development of this vaccine, whether it is ensuring that we avail our experts, because we also have experts, we also have people that are into such uh, uh, studies, then government should support that and then ensure that measures are taken so that when the vaccine comes out, it will reach this part of the world for our people to use. Well, we take you to the Upper West Region, where the Regional Minister, Dr. Hafiz bin Sali, says though the region recorded some 75 confirmed cases of coronavirus with 73 recoveries and only one death, there's no need to be complacent in the fight against the virus. Dr. bin Sali made the statement at the start of the second phase of a market disinfection exercise in the region from where correspondent Rafiq Salam reports. Close to three dozen sprayers from West Management Company, Zoom Lion Ghana Limited, before 6 a.m. had converged at the forecourt of the Upper West Regional Coordinating Council with their equipment ready for the day's tax. Emmanuel Bosuri is the Upper West Manager of Zoom Lion Ghana Limited. Uh, we are ready, as you can see, our equipment. We are set for action to make sure that all the markets in the Upper West Region, that is 109 markets, are disinfected, including some other public toilets that are in the market. It is the second phase of the market disinfecting exercise, which was started a couple of months ago to help contain the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is the initiative of the government through the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development and partnered by Zoom Lion Ghana Limited. Upper West Region Minister Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali uh, gave an overview of the figures in the Upper West Region regarding coronavirus. 75 confirmed cases, 73 recovered, one active case and one death. And he's saying that the time is not right for them to rest on their oars. I want to say that some people have become complacent. We have become used to the existence of COVID-19 to the extent that people have become complacent. They think that we are out of the woods. We are not. So let all of us continue to preach to our people to adhere to the safety protocols. Unlike the previous occasion where boom sprayers and drones were not used, they were the ones largely used today in the exercise. They disinfected the war market Wa Fadama, the Laura Park, popularly referred to as the Wakajet year, and some of the yet to be completed high rise buildings constructed by the World Municipal Assembly through private partnership. Some market women commended the government for the initiative. Uh, this is a disease uh, that is unknown to our, them. Uh, they have been struggling uh, with it. Uh, there is somebody comes in with a helping hand, uh, that would really uh, help them a lot. And she says that for them, uh, as market women, um, the, a lot of them are taking things for granted. But now that the exercise is going on, sensitization is going on, it will go in a long way uh, to help them. It talks about the fact that uh, coronavirus, um, at least uh, it's working the economies, um, it's making people to be sick, uh, people are dying uh, from the disease. And she prays that Almighty God will save all the people, save mankind from such a deadly disease. In all, 109 markets in the Upper West Region, Fort Mofum in the War Municipality will be disinfected. It is their expectation that once the disinfection system goes on, it will help to contain the spread of the deadly or the unknown enemy, coronavirus. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa 
Well, let's move on away from coronavirus, but still focus on health because uh, an international child rights NGO, Africate, says a number of its social intervention projects, including free therapy sessions for cerebral palsy children, have been badly hit by the coronavirus pandemic. Now, to support government in the fight against the spread of the virus, Africate Ghana has donated uh, PPEs and food items worth over 1 million Ghana cities to be distributed to vulnerable communities in the northern part of the country. Uh, Upper East Regional Correspondent Albert Sorry has more on the story. Africate Ghana is an international child rights and community development organization working across northern Ghana to improve the living conditions of children, women, and the vulnerable. The NGO has been implementing projects including physiotherapy sessions for cerebral palsy children, the dynamic approaches to school improvement, which had just finished training teachers on a model, the mobile ICT laboratory, microfinance disbursement, and the accelerated learning program which is helping put out-of-school children back in school. However, due to the coronavirus pandemic, all these social interventions have suffered some setbacks. According to the country director of Africa's Ghana, Nicolas Kuma, the organization has had to adapt to the new situation by repositioning itself to keep serving its communities since projects could no longer function in the usual way. Some of the project activities that were badly hit were the physiotherapy sessions for the cerebral palsy children, dynamic approaches to school improvement, which has just finished training teachers on a model, but they could not try it because the schools had to close down. Our ICT laboratory that trained JSS and SS children also had to close down. The disbursement of our family support program, our accelerated learning programs for our stage learners, among others. A plan therefore has to be drawn to support government's effort to respond to the needs of the communities as far as COVID-19 was concerned. To support government's efforts to stop the spread of the coronavirus in Ghana, Africans has donated personal protective equipment and food items worth 1,022,000 Ghana cities to be distributed to vulnerable communities in the Upper East, Upper West, Northeast and Northern regions. The items include 570 Veronica buckets, 15,658 face masks, about 6,000 hand sanitizers, nearly 13,000 liquid soaps, and 24,960 bar soaps. By the close of our COVID-19 response, we intend to reach a total of 87,918 direct beneficiaries and 714 1,566 indirect beneficiaries with the above machine services and tangible items such as rice and oil to support families that are struggling to feed during these extraordinary times. The items were received by the Upper East Regional Minister, Tangoba Abayagi, for onward distribution to the beneficiary districts. I will call on other benevolent organizations to replicate your kind gesture. Let me once again commend Africa for its role in the development of this region in particular and the country as a whole, for working with children in communities and for bringing big smiles to little faces. I know these items have been provided for a short term but, I will, but will surely help the people of the region. For Joy News, Albert Sorry, reporting from Bolgatanga. Well, to end the bulletin, the voter registration process was suspended, at least for 
one hour at Dominus in the central region on Sunday. And this was due to violence over the eligibility of some applicants. Registration officials at the Methodist Primary West One Center in Upper West Dintra packed, uh, packed out but returned after the district electoral officer intervened. Ohimin Terry have visited the area and has more in the following report. Well, so we have to do the newspapers. Again, um, we will be having an interaction with Weala. Specifically, it's because of um, that rant um, she had on her page, but it's because she has a genuine concern related to how some artists are treated in the showbiz industry. Well, uh, we're joined by Gifty Andra Pia on stream. Uh, Gifty, good morning to you. And then Mama V is here. Mama V, good morning to you. How are oh, you? Hi, How was good your weekend? Morning, you had a great weekend. Hey, did I say good morning, Gifty? <laughs> uh -huh. It's okay. It's okay. I know there are a lot of things on your mind. I think it was a very stressful week. Right. Yeah. 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 So the weekend was good. It was just to relax, okay. just to recover okay. from. I yeah. Could, I, I could sense that. From a challenging week. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> There's, all, yeah, there's stress good. everywhere. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. You just have to take some time off. Or was it late, stress. late, late night? Uh, yesterday, mm. uh, I woke up to a, a text message this dawn about a friend who works with um, one of the banks, and another. I don't. Know, it was very coincidental. Another mm. also who works with one of the top hotels, and they had been home since May. Ooh. You know, May they were given half a salary. The bank they'd been uh, he'd been laid off since June. You know, mm. so. The COVID is biting hard. It is. And we it's need to a, open up. A very so, difficult time yeah. uh, for, for all of us, really. I think we're dealing with it in different ways. Mm, mm. Uh, sometimes it's the stress. Some people have lost their jobs, like mm, you were saying. Mm. Some people's businesses are not uh, going on like it used to yeah, be. There are people yeah. who have also invested in other areas where they thought... Yeah, the returns could, will be good. Yeah, but it hasn't good been. Hasn't so been. we're dealing with different, different challenges. Mm. But listen, there's just one factor in the center... Uh, that can hold, which is for me, it's just the grace of God. Amen. Honestly, Amen. it's it's Amen. just a grace. God so um, just have faith. Uh, Gifty has a lot of faith. She joins us online yeah. now. She's on stream. Gifty. Yeah. Hi. Hi, guys. Good morning. Charlie. Good morning. Good to see you, Gifty. Are you like playing the piano or something? No, I'll be. Like, oh, no. Did you hear piano from? Uh, I don't know. Like somebody was pressing some keys. It sounded good, by the way. So. Oh, I'm <laughs> using the the mouse. Okay. Oh, Gifty. <laughs> the mouse. Is like that. No, Gifty is always a wonderful person. Yeah. Okay, Roland. I think okay. I, I think Roland Roland Roland's been. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, Roland, you have a list of dedications before. Yes, uh, Salif will come no, back to I was just going to say, Roland is crashing on. He's been crashing on you since. Give to go ahead. Yes, I have a crash oh. on it. But beyond that, um, oh. Salif will no, come back. No, no, no. He's celebrating the birthday today. Salif, is it his birthday? Yeah, today is his birthday. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, so, no, no, no. I, I've never celebrated birthday on the show. So today is his birthday. So I want to say happy birthday to you, Sally for Combat. And this one is for myself, your wife, Flora, and the rest of the family. Sally for Combat is the head of primary health care pharmacy. Mechu Adian Maminka. Sally for Combat is the head of primary health care pharmacy, the Boku Presbyterian Hospital. It's also an entrepreneur. Okay, right. So from Gifty and myself, we say happy birthday to you. Mr. Yes. Sally Fukumba. No, Mr. Sally Fukumba, not Mrs. Fukumba. No, not Mrs. Fukumba. I said Mr. Okay, okay, great. Hey, Roland. Okay, so <laughs> shall I move on? Oh, that's how mommy and Kelly. Okay, you move on. <laughs> <laughs> because you're going to cut, you're going to cut me when I have some very important things to say. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. me too movement. It's not fair. Give to move on, why? Okay, so I'm starting with the final newspaper. Final newspaper has a banner headline: Nana gives two million CDs to one thousand male entrepreneurs living with disability. That's a story that we've been talking about since last week. Mm. And uh, and um, you know, I always say that the devil is in the detail. I, I, I'm interested to find out a bit more about this. It's an interesting story, but I want to find out a bit more about it. Uh, so it comes with a picture of President Kufuor with the Business Development Minister, and they're handing over what looks like a dark check to, I believe, one of the persons with disabilities uh, there. On top of that story, or let me just go, just by the side of that story, you have John Buedu monitors voter registration in Bono and Ahafo regions. That story is on page four. 
and only 32% wear face masks regularly in greater Accra. That's according to a survey. It's also on page five of the final newspaper. Two other stories we have on the finder. Dr. Baumia commissions 7.5 million 100 bed Ghana infectious disease center. Mama Swabwaji, your story there. Yes. And then again on page five, we have the SDA Church Women's Ministries ministries condemn lynching of 90-year-old woman, one of the stories which continues to trend, and indeed it has to. I'm going to go through the inside pages, pages of the Finder newspaper. Friday, July 31st or 31 is public holiday. That's the Interior Minister. John Boydou monitors okay, voter registration. That story is in detail on page uh, page four and second phase of free water supply to take effect this july ghana water company limited we are ready to enjoy waiting to enjoy and then republic bank records impressive growth all in the business uh, the final newspaper only 32 percent wearing face masks the details are there and we shall deal with abusers if victims provide evidence that's according to Ambrose Derry. Uh, which story is he referring to? I think is the challenge. Okay, he has challenged residents of the border communities to provide um, evidence of abuse by security personnel to authorities so that they can investigate them. So he's essentially responding to those who live in the border communities, border region, etc., who are complaining about the presence of military and the brutality they say they suffer. Okay, back page of the final newspaper, finally. Nana gives two million to 1,000. So that's a story by Daniel Nono uh, from the Jubilee House. And it comes with more of the pictures of that particular uh, program that happened. It just looks a bit, it looks to me like just a few people, but well, let's see. And so, yeah, Mavi, that's it for the, okay. Actually, the back of the, the back page of the mm. final newspaper, Actually, the story with Dr. Baumia commissioning uh, the Infectious Disease Center comes with beautiful pictures of the center. And of course, Senor Hosi and then the Deputy um, Health Minister, Bernard Oko Boy. Mm. Yes, so that's it for the final newspaper. Okay, great. I have the state man, if you want me to go along. You don't know which one you said? I do have statesman as well. Oh, so then just finish up with the statesman. We'll take it okay. from here. Okay. Uh, Okay, so hang on. I have a little challenge with this thing. So let me come in. Let me come in with the daily graphic whilst you get yourself yeah, ready to do the statesman. Yeah. Front page of the daily graphic: President relaxes more restrictions. Worship extended to two hours. Number of worshippers unlimited. Drinking spots to operates. So uh, this is like license for Roland and Co to <laughs> hang out after work and not get home. Charlie, Early, like, how would they hang out within Corona? Or? I mean, social distancing. Would they hang out? So I beg you, you cannot talk to me because of this one. Uh, UCC investor sign MOU to operationalize Commander Sugar Factory. There was somebody put a question, I think, sometime last week on Facebook and was asking what has happened to the Commander Sugar Factory. Uh, and then, of course, uh, this tragic uh, incident that we're also dealing with today on our show. Thankfully, we've got Shrash and the NCC is speaking. Lynching of 90-year-old woman, IGP dispatches homicide team to hunt killers. One of those videos that when you see, initially, you won't say it's Ghana. But sadly, it is. This happened right here in our country. And then we had people looking on, just watching. So like uh, the whole community, uh, right? Know. Yeah. So, so even, if I, if, even if I said Thank to you, Roland, that I'm a witch, like, so what? Get what I mean? Yes. Like, what rights do you we have, have to, take to harm me yeah. uh, and to think that we're all enjoying basic human rights? You know, we say it's alienable rights that nobody can take away from you. But this happens, and we've seen people just condemn it like that is nothing. <laughs> Issuing statement, that really is nothing. We need action. Uh, back on the front page of the Daily Graphic, use COVID-19 to diversify economy. Price Waterhouse Coopers urges government. And then Mahama introduces Professor Opoku Ajimai. Today, ahead of that, we have special program uh, on uh, the Jane mm. and John ticket. Mm. Uh, we're trying to fix that puzzle. Uh, so Evan Spencer uh, will be bringing us a lot more ahead of this outdoor great, ceremony. Great, great. In the center spread, well, this is a project that we've all been passionate about. I'll show you 
uh, videos. This is like today. Today, today. like even right now, we this can show morning. it whilst I read the uh, right. uh, the right. story in the center spread. Baumia inaugurates seven point five million infectious disease center. This happened on Friday. It's located at the East uh, Hospital. There are some backstories that you guys will love. So you know that Ga East Hospital is just next door, right? Because it's in the same compound. So I saw nurses in their uniform in this infectious disease center that was just handed over uh, to the Ministry of Health on Friday. They're like ready to work, even though it's not in operation. They really want to work there. Yeah. It was just so touching, very emotional uh, on Friday for everybody. And the soldiers, the Ghana Armed Forces, oh my God, I mean, it was, it was just... Uh, uh, wow. And this this is the plug that has every single person that contributed to this yeah. project. It's just uh, sad that it's only on among all of us your name that is there. Well, I think this is quite tragic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a project ambassador, so. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, today uh, on yeah. the AM show, this is like a, this is a world class facility. There are so many backstories that I'll be telling you in the course of the program today, uh, and then the next project is in Kumasi. So. Please, we still need more of your money. Everybody must contribute to it. And I think the organizations that came out to support will be really proud because as you can see on the screen, every ward, every lounge, every unit has a sponsor on it. And they've personalized it. So you see that in the wards where there is uh, either CH or Fidelity, they've actually owned it. You'd see that they've got their personalized messages in the ward, uh, wishing patient speedy recovery and things like that really refreshing and this is world class they've got a laboratory that has some of the noguchi equipment in there as well uh, so plenty more you would see and i'll be telling you the trustees behind the project businessmen and women that you usually would not see uh, i'm speaking to three of them today they will talk about how they got themselves involved and how ready they are to we do the massive project we can't wait. this is real like what we have shown you is real this is no like 3D, whatever, whatever. This is real. This is this exists. This is what we launched on Friday. Oh God, I am so emotional about this project. Yeah, can't stop talking about it. And, and then knowing that it will be replicated in three more cities, exactly. three more big regions, we have. Yeah. We know that definitely we're in for some good times. Exactly. See, the Bank of Ghana's name is in the intensive care because they sponsored. It's a 20 bird intensive care modern units and solely sponsored by the Bank of Ghana. Uh, on the back page, let's get back to the newspapers. On the back page of the uh, Daily Graphic, Ghana Water starts free water services to domestic consumers. The Ghanaian Times front page, former president to our door running mate today is Jane and John. Government eases COVID-19 restrictions as Ghana send, uh, enters second phase combat against disease. Temaport rakes in 553.6 million Ghana CD but misses June revenue targets. Massive disinfection exercise prevented COVID-19 spread in northern, uh, northern or northeast region, according to the regional minister. NLA chases lot of fraudsters, winners to receive prizes on the back page. Agrotech to invest $21 million into Commander Sugar Factory. Bogatanga Technical Investi demands financial clearance to employ more staff. The last paper I have is the Daily Dispatch. Front page of the Daily Dispatch. Ghana's online education faces serious challenge. Only 28% households have computers or have computer. Mid-year budget review was a manifesto pledge into 2020 elections, according to the minority leader, Haruna Idrisu. Finance Minister responds to NDC, still on the mid-year budget review. And then Atta Mills was an outstanding personality. That's according to former President Jerry John Rollins. Roland Walker, I am done. Well, let me do the custodian. And uh, the custodian has on the front page, Baumia opens Ghana's first infectious disease center. We have one of the project ambassadors right here, so we don't even have to look far. She's no, you don't. Look, oh, short. <laughs> <laughs> look short. <laughs> Just have to look near, and uh, we have her.
But kudos, Senor Jose, uh, putting all this together, the rest yeah. of the team there, we have to say. And there have been some... And great... every worker worked for free. Uh, uh, mami, Pro bono. Mami, 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 free. Mami, 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 mami. Kaka ho, so that people will be inspired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, say, we'll talk about it. Uh, Kufado empowers a thousand disabled entrepreneurs. And uh, this is a good initiative, I have to say, because when you're somebody who tends to mingle with, uh, um, with people with some physical challenges uh, you get to know that they need this than ever uh, and we don't have to downplay this at all uh, john buedu monitors voter registration in bono and half regions cpp submit audited accounts to ec nla reviews timelines for payment to little winners and on the back page oh this is good 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 by i would do mahama the managing editor i love this it's all tennis football everything is there the back page of the the custodian has uh, my United I one uh, Coleman Kinsley Coleman. If they don't land Sancho, that's a Jaden Sancho. And then we also do have Serena Williams investing in uh, in New LA's women's football team. That's a good one there as well. Let's go to the Daily Guide. It's about the main story: four million uh, euro Airbus Kando Mahama government official. One brother faces Amidu, and we know that um, the special prosecutor <laughs> brought a whole statement out. Just put a, a face to a uh, government uh, official one. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you can say whatever you want, but he's, he, he's, 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 he's in on, on this one, I have to say. IGP chases 90-year-old woman's killers. In the video, you see it was a young woman who was doing the, the lynching so bad uh, alongside others. Uh, uh, NDC fights people's budget. Hawa pistol taken away. Disinfection slows COVID-19 in Northeast region, according to... The regional boss, and then we do have NLA makes COVID-19 adjustment. Uh, Kofi Asayamayao is the, is the director general for the National Literacy Authority. And then we'll we have uh, also on the back page our sports stories as well. There's, uh, this paper I want us to take a look at, and it's um, the Economy Times. That's my last paper. It says government fiscal deficit worsens and 2020 appropriation to increase by some 12% as government asks for 11.8 billion uh, Ghana cities in supplementary budget. Katanka Automobile, uh, Automobile granted license as government established automobile industry development center. That's a good one. Okay, uh, I'm done. What's your pick? I wanted to focus on the on the new infectious disease center. Oh, you want to talk about yeah, the project? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, because uh, if you look at, you know, there's been a whole argument about how it's been, it was being politicized at the time. We call Senor Jose. And, mm -hmm. But this speaks uh, volumes massively to how if we have our act together in our right senses to say that this is a general commitment we want to undertake to a certain project, with giving project management timelines, and this is what the output would be, mm. for which we can collaborate effectively as private sector mm -hmm. and the public sector to be able to achieve. Absolutely. And of course, I know that the cost is minus uh, man hours, labor, mm. and then the, the bureaucracy. <laughs> and I feel that this should be, if the state would allow, mm. how we need to undertake public projects. We have, let's say, a private entity that is going to drive a project mm. for a government entity. If we can have a president who can say that maybe this uh, hospital I want to build in the eastern region or the, or the northern region, I want this project management team mm -hmm. led by this mm -hmm. to undertake this, report to me, to maybe a secretariat or the presidency or something, will have good value for money. Mm. Even if they chop 10% safe, the 10% <laughs> would be like how it did public sector. No, and that's the reality because you see, we, 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 we know that we have the people who can do good things, mm. but it's not until we give them the opportunity to do what they have to do, yeah. devoid of all the bureaucracies, the 10% chopping and all that, that we can see some good output. Mm. And this is massively a yeah. good testimony. Gifty, uh, you have something to say on this or some other issues? Yeah, I actually didn't finish with my um, with my newspaper, so I was wondering. Oh, the uh, statesman, oh, oh, the statesman. Oh, 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 Apologies, oh, oh, statesman. please come in. Yes. I, think, I think you are left with one. I was actually left with two, but don't worry. Okay. I can do We're one. not worried. Oh, please, you just do one. Let's go. 
Okay, I have the statement. The statement is reporting on the uh, the income support that government is providing for COVID-19. So its banner headline says, Income Support for COVID-19 Job Losses Victims and Churches, Mosques, Transport, Tourism Back in Full. Then they also have a Kufaru adjudged Best President in Africa. On top of that story, you have NLA reviews timelines for payment of winning tickets and prizes. And I only have the back page as well. On the back page of the uh, statement, says uh the second okay yeah so the back page of the state man it has sports olympics super saturday in at london 2012 named greatest british summer games moment and andre are you named 2019 2020 english championship team of season okay whatever that means so yeah i just wanted to chip in that i i did have the the bnft but essentially it's also reporting mostly about the president's you know intervention for persons living with disability so yes i mean you guys were talking about the um the first infectious disease center i think it's a, it's a great it's a great um initiative it tells you what we can do if we come together if we put uh, what our collective strength can do and you see it it took you know i'm sure one person or a few people to think about it and to bring other people on board to get mm -hmm. it done so sometimes it's not just you sometimes you think of the ideas and it's so daunting for you it's like how am i going to get this done mm -hmm. but sometimes it's just about bringing up the idea and getting people on board and you can do it together so it's a great thing i'm looking forward to what we're doing kumasi and the other places as well and mamavi please tell them to make me project ambassador to i i know right no p uh, on friday the gmpc gmpc yeah. uh the the boss of the GMPC pledged support for the subsequent projects, which was really, really good because they, con they contributed massively uh, to this one. And the military as well. They're yeah. also on board yeah. the, the projects that's to come. But, you know, they worked, you know, they had to work 24 hours and they were running shifts. So and that's yeah. that's and something that is in his uh, in his speech. I didn't he gave us a, b a bit of the backstory. Mm. Um, so there's no way you can achieve this without that sacrifice that he put in. So I personally want to thank all of them, those who put in their 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 you know sacrifices, their sweat. God bless all of them. Mm. And we can think of this center, you know, as something that we built. And I I think government should learn from this. Hey. They should really learn from uh, this process. Yeah. yeah, but it's the same suggestion as what you were making in mm. terms of cuts all the uh, the bureaucracies and and, yeah. and 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 treat it as this was like a I think it's just the leadership of it, right? It, it run like a private project. Mm. Okay, so guys, uh, this uh, the ninety year old woman who was lynched yes. with people yes. looking yes. on. Uh, we've had, if you look at the Daily Graphic newspaper today on the front page, they say that D the IGP has dispatched homicide team to hunt the killers. We know they haven't arrested anybody yet. We've got Shrash speaking to this matter and the NCC. And I discovered whilst preparing for this conversation that the NCC actually carried out a, a research, tried to understand this whole witchcraft uh, and how some people accused are being kept in camps. In this research, very detailed research back in 2010, uh, we will discuss it extensively here on our show, but it's totally appalling uh, to see that this is happening to someone. Yeah. And I was just telling Roland and, and, and Gifty that even if I said, I mean, even if, if I say that I am a witch, like, yeah, well, Mavi, it's. I mean, well, I, I, I can't watch the video. I haven't watched it. Uh, I see you're playing it right now. I put something else on my page. I can't watch it. I say, so I have, I have an 80 plus year old grandmother who sort of mothered me. So it, everybody who knows me knows knows about my grandmother. Mm. Like he, they may not have seen her, but they know about him. I it's just me So I can't, you know, it's I can't understand. Like it's just amazing that you see this thing in the 21st century. When we thought that we were done with this thing, I mean, it, it hurts to see that the social psyche is still problematic when it comes to dealing with this witchcraft thing. And I, I, I we, we, we thank God that there is technology at least so that we can see this happening. Because for all you know, some of these things are happening 
but nobody is recording. Mm -hmm. But actually, in this case, it happened, someone recorded, and so we can go after them. But a fundamental problem is still there. The way that we think as a society, the social psyche, that if you are a witch, you can kill me, so I'll kill you first before you can kill me. I think, I don't know how. We, 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 we've closed down some of the witch, witches' camps, etc. but it looks like there is still a lot okay. of work, a lot mm -hmm. of work that has to be done yeah. to clear the thing out of our society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, you said it all right. Uh, we'll continue this conversation right up to sport. But you know, sports is all about the English Premier League. Now we're looking ahead to the Champions League. Those who are laughing, crying, uh, everything else will come back to you again. If you mixed the action yesterday, we've got some playbacks as Benedict joins us. And Chelsea, yeah, they pull through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happened to us now? I haven't said anything. Ah, okay. No, uh, no, I, I, I think this <laughs> was a top team. That would be Liverpool. Oh, no, no. She's gone to Man City. So. Man City, yeah. Man City. <laughs> so, so I'm not so, I'm sure. <laughs> when I change my mind, I'll let you know. Oh, Gifty. <laughs> Right. We hear you. you follow football. Uh, Gifty, thanks for the reveal this morning. Gifty is back. Hey, no, I don't know. <laughs> back on pause at 3 p.m. Uh, today here on Joy News. Gifty, enjoy the morning. Stay with us. We've got Benedict coming up. He's got all the details in sports, all the action yesterday. It comes back right at you this morning with all the analysis. Hi there, it's a Monday morning. My name is Benedict Tools. Welcome to the sports segment here on AM Show. This morning, we'll show you how it all went down in English Premier League, uh, the final day, the 2019-20 English Premier League, uh, with uh, the teams that were relegated intact, as well as the uh, teams that are going to play in next season's UEFA Champions League, also intact. I'm referring to the top four. The last two teams uh, were, were, you know, we were able to know the last two teams, that's Manchester United and Chelsea. Also, as teams were going on relegation and teams also making the Champions League spots, we're also looking at teams that are going to join the English Premier League next season. Well, we already know too that West Bromwich Albion and uh, Leeds uh, are going to join, but we are waiting for that other team to join them. So, Anne City uh, were in the playoffs uh, yesterday. Their first home game uh, was to Brentford, and Black Stars captain Andre Ayew missed the penalty, but redeemed his image and scored. A wonderful goal to give Swansea City a 1-0 lead going into the second leg, which will be played on Monday. All this plus what happened in Italy. Juventus, another Scudetto title in the bag. They are ninth, 34th in their uh, history. We'll show you highlights of that. Uh, plus more analysis on English Premier League. But we have to start here on the local scene. And President uh, Nana Adedanko Kufado has given go-ahead to the Black Princesses and Black Maidens to begin training camps ahead of their respective World Cup qualifiers. Now, football and other contact sports have been on suspension since March following the outbreak of the virus. Now, however, the under-20 and under-17 women uh, teams have been allowed to start preparations, but under strict adherence of the protocols. Our female under-20 and under-17 national football teams have been given the clearance to go into their respective training camps to begin preparations towards their FIFA and CAF sanctioned international matches which begin in September. Whilst in training, the playing, technical and management teams must observe strictly all the protocols issued by government, CAF and FIFA against COVID-19. All other team and contact sports and competitive sporting events remain suspended till further notice. Are we well on? Yes, we are. Well, witchcraft is a complex but lived reality in Ghana. There is obviously a high belief in the existence of witchcraft. A 2010 NCC study conducted on witchcraft and human rights of women in Ghana attempted a few definitions for witchcraft, which I find fascinating. In the research, respondents defined witchcraft as use of spiritual powers to harm or kill people, the act of seeing into a person's future and manipulating him or her negatively, the act of using spiritual powers to appear in a person's dream or the exhibition of extreme antisocial 
behavior. So just a few of the definitions that came out in that research back in 2010. Assaults on people accused of witchcraft have increased over the period. Many of them have been physically harmed. The latest is a heartbreaking video of a 90-year-old woman who was lynched near Salaga in the Savannah region, Ikea Dante. And I must say that the video uh, is, is one that's all very disturbing. You may not have that mindset for it. Uh, apologies there. Uh, Ikea Denta was slapped, kicked, and caned on Thursday after being accused of witchcraft by a supposed soothsayer. Uh, we can, uh, questioning that we are asking is, can we ever eliminate these dangerous superstitions since this is not the first time? And who protects those accused of witchcraft? And why is it that people in positions and wealth are not likely to be accused of witchcraft, but women, mostly old ladies who are widowed with no social and economic standing, are accused of witchcraft and in some cases banned from their villages? What is the legal justification of being tacked as a witch and banned as a result or threatened with lynching? And to what extent are the human rights of such persons upheld? So plenty questions that we're asking ourselves and that's why we've raised these very important personalities so we can discuss this matter thoroughly if you've got questions and comments you can join us uh, later on with your comments as well so let's just introduce our guests who are joining us live on zoom madam josephine Nkrumah is chairperson of the ncce good morning to you ma'am good to see you yeah good morning just unmute for us uh -huh. Madam Nkrumah, please unmute for us. I'm, I'm not muted. Yeah. Okay. We've also got Diana Adiko, who is a gender activist. Good morning, Diana. Good to see you again. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, good morning. And Mr. Joseph Wittal is Commissioner of Shrash. Good morning to you, sir. It's a pleasure to have all of you join us for this conversation. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, great. So you've all seen the video. Uh, or you've, you've read the story, because not everybody has the heart to watch the video, but you've probably seen uh, the story. So let's just take quick reactions from you. Perhaps I'll start with you, the gentleman, Mr. Jose Wutal. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mamavi. <clears throat> uh, it took me time to, to watch this video. The first time it came out, I refused to watch it because uh, it's just man's inhumanity to man. Uh, in this case, women uh, inhumanity to women. And it's heartbreaking, and I wish this doesn't happen in our dear country. Madam Nkrumah. Hi, good morning again. Can you hear me now? Yes, um, yes, we can. Loud yes, we can. Okay, good. Um, truth be told, I'm only just watching the video because I totally refused to look at it. I, I was given a graphic description verbally by someone, and I thought, I just can't bring myself to watch it. But it's, it is sad that in this time, in a democratic dispensation, with all the um, human rights protection we have in our country, we should still see this, considering a lot of work that has gone into this canker, traditional canker over the years, it's amazing that it's coming up again. And I believe very strongly that we need to quickly put in the necessary interventions to um, firstly bring justice to this woman who passed away, bring the perpetrators to book and begin to engage the communities very seriously on the repercussions of this and the consequences and penalties as well. Mm. Diana, your initial reaction? Um, I think uh, both panelists have said it. It's, it's gruesome. It was painful to watch. It was heartbreaking. But then I, I thought, this is what for years, for over 100 years in Ghana, and probably around Africa and the world, people have gone through when they are accused of being witches and most often it will be women. This is what has happened over time. This is how people lost their lives. Today, the difference is their cameras, for it to be recorded, for the public to react. And it's, it's heartbreaking. And to even think that we continue to do this now, after all the work we believe we have done, 
tells us that there's a long way to cover. So my heart was torn into pieces to watch that video. Mm. And I remember the first time I went to a witch camp, uh, it was back then, uh, the Gambaga, it was uh, very famous at the time, and a lot of work seemed to have been done. But how is the issue of the sociocultural mindset of the communities related to its pervasiveness or existence still? Uh, le let me pose that question to you, um, uh, Madam Josephine Koma. Well, the first, I think the Constitution assures us our right to um, exercise our cultural, religious, whatever um, preferences. But again, it is subject to the law. It is subject to the Constitution. And I think in this particular regard, it is subject to the rights and the protection of every individual in this country that says our human dignity is inviolable. And to that extent, no matter what your social cultural background is. Dignity being viable as enshrined in the constitution and as assured to all of us particularly when it comes to witchcraft, because it is something that has been um, gender-based. The rights of women particularly comes into play, the rights of the vulnerable in society, and the fact that they are meant to be protected rather than the discrimination that we've seen, rather than the inhumane treatment, oh, and, and to this extent, the fact that they're being killed they're taking away life because of sociocultural preferences, and that is unacceptable in the Constitution as the fundamental law of the land. Mm. Uh, uh, Madam Adiko, if you take a look at how communities have been able to come together because women have played a key role, how is this at the core of dehumanizing women uh, in, our, in our cultural setting? Uh, particularly with this, even though we've had several instances over the years? Um, yeah, again, this, you are right, it brings our attention to a conversation that probably we all have been shying away from. This is a manifestation this time around in a community, a small community, uh, probably that has a lot more indigenous people than it has migrants. And uh, we see what happened. And as I said initially, this is not different from what has happened in the past. And this is the same reason you mentioned witch camp. As a matter of fact, the concept of the witch camp was birthed in response to things like this. In the past, when um, an individual is diagnosed or identified in court as a witch, there was every effort to lynch these persons or to harm them. The option they had was to run to, and this is in, in, the northern, in the northern region, which is now the Savannah region, was for them to run to a camp where they are protected from harm. And in addition to that, they are also diagnosed, there are rituals that are performed to determine whether they are in, innocent of the accusation or they are guilty. Most often than not, they are found guilty. <laughs> and the persons who lead the camps, which are usually in the in the regions that the camps we had in Ghana, we call them the Tidanes or the, the male chiefs. They perform some acts for them in the name of exercising their powers from them or taming their powers such that they are less harmful to society. So the camps were actually introduced as a way to prevent the communities from killing the accused victims. And they, again, there are ways to determine how somebody is a witch, and it's very interesting. One of the ones that I find most bizarre is that if they show up in your dreams. So if I sleep tonight and I see you, Roland, in my dream, <laughs> I can come to your office this morning and accuse you of witchcraft, attempt to attack and cause harm, and probably your only option will be to run to the nearest witch camp to be saved. And at that place, there will be a, 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 an activity that will determine that you are not a witch or you are a wizard and then you are going to be kept there for the rest of your life if you want to be safe.
So that's how it plays out. And there are so many other things. And it's interesting, you see there, uh, Madame Nkrumah talked about the intersections. I mean, the fact that it's women, and you see the certain intersection, you see that it intersects very strongly with age. Very, very often, it's older persons. Very, very often, those old persons should be female. And very often, it ties very closely with their economic status. They often are poor, and they often are uneducated, or they are not affiliated with the mighty and powerful in societies. They often must be people who probably cannot have children, or have not had children before, whose children have died. They probably must be persons whose husbands are dead, or there are people who they think have very odd life that does not tie in with what society does. And that's where at the community level. But I think as we go on, we'll also discuss how religion, religion plays a key role in what is happening as our prayer comes and our healing comes. So the Islam religion kind of identifies with witchcraft accusation. The um, uh, Christian religion does very strongly, and the traditional religion as well. So all these religions come together. They're looking for people who are the cause of lack of progress in society. They are, they are looking for reasons why we are retarded as communities and as countries. Therefore, they will have to find somebody, and that somebody has to look like a fair mm. uh, And then, Mr. Wita, how has the law, uh, our constitution, uh, the criminal code that we have, been able to interface with this, knowing that this is a social cultural phenomenon that also would need the law to play a key role in bringing communities of perpetrators to book? Uh, in 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 a, a one-stop shop, so to speak. Mr. Wistow, did you hear me? Can you can you please unmute? It looks like we lost the sound there. Mr. Wittal? Right. Okay, great. Yes, I heard, I heard there's a last part of okay. it. And, uh, so, so, it so, kind of... Okay, so basically we have the law. The law is supposed to be enforced, but we also know that it's a social cultural phenomenon. How, how have we been able to interface that over the years up to this point? I must say that, unfortunately, we haven't been able to do that much, much to the disappointment of human rights activists. Because these lynchings and co take place all over the communities there. We have monitored about six camps. Uh, before they even get to the camp, some are actually killed. Some are banished, sent out of their villages as to where they will end up that is left to them. And the law doesn't seem to occupy us. We have policemen. We have police stations, we have all kinds of uh, security agencies there, but unfortunately, it appears the vulnerable uh, persons who are accused of witchcraft are not in a position to be protected. And so it is something that we have looked on. Uh, the space of the state in those villages is lost, and I, I think we need to really rethink how we protect these vulnerable people. So I just want to pick up from there and still stay with you, Mr. Wetal. What has failed? Because we've got Shrash, for instance, we've got the NCC. I was just referring to a research that was done by the NCC back in 2010. We know what the issue is. We've got the laws. What is preventing us from dealing with it? Well, you have to see the angle from which we all operate as state institutions. Uh, I'm sure this film will come on her part, so I'll concentrate on mine. We are to protect the rights of people. But when it comes to law enforcement, and in this case, lynching enters into a realm of criminality. And so it is the duty of the Ghana Police Service, who have the responsibility for investigating and prosecuting crime, to do that. All that we can do is to educate the people, the communities, all the people who are the stakeholders involved in this as to what they ought to do to stay within the principles of the constitution and uh, it, it will be it's not the position of the commission to go ahead 
and take matters of that, that nature to the court because we cannot even, we don't have prosecutorial powers. So those who have it are expected to do that. We can bring that to their attention, but not beyond that. And that is why I said the space, when it comes to investigations and prosecutions at the village level, in the case of women or, well, let me say, persons accused of witchcraft, that space is very empty. And it's about time our police service, our security agencies wake up to the reality that protection is not about only uh, going about making sure that criminals do not, armed robbers do not enter homes to take their property, but protecting the, the, the physical integrity of the people in the community, which includes these people alleged to be accused of witch, uh, witchcraft. Hmm. So yes, we have our role, but there are other state actors who need to come in. But I mean, Krima, what's, what's the missing link? Because you do a lot of education. Uh, I remember there was a project to close down the camps, even though not all the camps have been closed. So we do understand what the issues are. W what's is missing? I think um, Joe has actually said it. Um, the social interventions on the part of state institutions, on the part of NGOs, I think has been rigorous over the years. And in fact, if you go back in time, you'd see that there has been a drastic reduction in the occurrences like this. Why it is rearing its ugly head again um, we're, we're, we're trying to get to understand the issues. Um, but I think what Joe said is very true. The criminal dimension to this, the law enforcement to this, and the equal projection of the consequences of this has been perhaps not as amplified as it ought to be in order for people to realize that there are real consequences for this. There are penalties and that there are laws that actually go to punish you if you're a perpetrator of such an act or if you abuse the human rights of another individual. So I think we need to step up our law enforcement. We need to engage more with our law, law enforcement agencies in the districts and in the communities where these have occurred in order to understand the criminal dimension to this and the legal implications Thereof. Mm. Diana, monitoring what people have been saying, the, the reactions to this uh, tragic incident, it sounds surprising that there were a lot of observers, but there hasn't been any arrests. And I wonder if you also hold that same view that this thing happened on Thursday and we haven't arrested anybody. Yes, yes, I do. I absolutely hold that view. And I am concerned and I am disturbed. Um, if we um, shred NCTE, NGO, civil society continue to create awareness on these issues. Take for example, you train a child that if you play with fire or if you touch fire, fire would burn you. And you keep repeating that message. And somehow this child keeps tempting fire and playing with fire and doesn't get burned. What happens to your message? If we keep telling communities and, and societies and families that you, you, cannot, um, you cannot harm people, violate their rights, and get away with it, there are laws in this country that does not accept it. Yet they do it, and they get away with it. Do you think that they are ever going to stop? Take, for example, the issue of Major Mahama. Up to date, even though all of us saw videos of what happened to him, I think to date, we don't have people who have been convicted of the crime. We know a few people are still in court, but that's taking way too long. What that does, it breeds an environment of impunity. It breeds, it, it, kill, it, it doesn't allow people to follow their conscience, and it makes all the education comes to naught. It needs to be a blend between education and enforcement of the law. If you tell people there is a law, that does not necessarily speak to whether the witchcraft exists or not, and that's a very tricky place to go. So the law has insulated itself from that. But the law says whether or not you identify somebody as a witch or wizard, 
It is not in your hands and place to harm or violate that person. That is clear. Just as I would, uh, I would not in my home in the morning begin to slap people because I don't like the size of their nose, so you cannot also slap another person because you think that person is a witch. As simple as that. No state has tried, at least in Ghana, to tell Ghanaians that the, uh, witchcraft does not exist or we do not believe in witchcraft. It is up to you to decide what you believe in and how that has an effect on you. But what is important is we need to understand that you just cannot rise in the morning, pick on someone, declare they are witches, and destroy their life. It is not right. Mm. It is absolutely not right. And if this particular one that has gone viral is not used as a basis to set examples, I am sorry this is going to get worse. A few years ago, we had conversation about how similar persons were treated at prayer camps. Similar persons were treated at healing camps. And the fact that there's also some connection with people's mental health and how the rest of us decide to describe mental health and translate that into witchcraft possession. And so if we have worked so hard to change the mode of operation in healing camps and prayer camps, yet we allow the broader community to, to pull out somebody into in broad day and kill her and not take action till now. All we are saying is, go ahead, mm. Now, uh, we, we do know, Mr. Wetal, that your agency, through your article that establishes you, uh, mandates you to investigate some of these actions. Um, over the years, my observation perhaps will be that unless these are brought to your notice formally within a complaint, then perhaps we don't get to see that. Um, has that been the case? Or perhaps beyond the six numbers that you've reported, you've gone into the communities and found that these are abuses that need readily some assistance of the law to bring perpetrators a book? Yeah, thank you. Uh, beyond the investigations, even, we work closely with some NGOs such as Action Aid in the, the footprint areas, Patinga, Gambaga, and all those areas that uh, were mentioned. And so we were able, uh, our, our focus now is not only in terms of investigations, but how do we get the communities prepared to allow reintegration of these alleged witches by enabling the push communities to accept them when they come back. And the pool communities to also understand that it is not a business for the Tindana or whoever is in charge of the camp. Mm. But these are human beings, and they ought to be given their freedom to live like all of us. And so we do a, a cross-sectoral activity when it comes to the protection of the rights of witches, investigations, we do uh, community preparation for reintegration and a number of other things, even including working with NGOs to enable support, microfinancing to be given to the communities. Actually, my, com my, my commission is part of the reintegration committee of the witches camps in the northern region. Mm. Uh and for the NCC, I know education is important, but it is because we want people to be conversant with what people's civil, civil liberties are. The Constitution rightly states in Article 17 that everybody is equal before the law. Uh, why is it that we haven't, over the years, been able to bring the perpetrators to book? Even though in some of those jurisdictions, we have uh, police stations or police commands, personnel just close by. Well, Roland, I think um, I think we, we've we've touched on this already. But like you said, there's been a lot of education. Um, Mr. Joe Wittell has ex, ex, explained to you the the level of um, engagement that has gone on, and Dina has worked very closely with these communities and as well as other um, yeah, NGOs in. The various communities but the, the the key thing is 
beyond education and beyond the sensitization, what then happens? We really need to perhaps engage more with the security agencies and let them know that without them plugging into this space where they ensure that they're, com they, they're committed to We seem to have lost the, the, sound, uh, uh, the sound connection to Madam Nkrumah. Uh, let's see if that can come back. But uh, there's, another, there's another issue of a fundamental uh, social culture. I mean, to think about the fact that, and, and this, is, this is not the law. This is just a, a society where a lot of people are looking on while something like this happens to a 90-year-old. So fundamentally, is there something wrong with us as a people? I mean, even if you don't know that there's a law that's against lynching or harming someone, but for every one of those people that we saw in the video to stand there and just watch, there must be something fundamentally wrong with us as a people. What have you identified? I'll start with you, uh, Dinah. Um, I, I have, ad I think, it is because they are convinced that she is guilty, and not the 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 the, the, priest, the priestess or the person who identified her out as a witch was actually trying to find solution to their delayed progress as a community. So then they identified her as the cause for the lack of progress and lack of development for them collectively as a community, and obviously individually for their sicknesses, for their lack of jobs, for their poor crop yielding, and all of that. So they have collectively agreed that she is the enemy, and the enemy needs to be gotten rid of. So you notice that not only is the act of witchcraft accusation persistence, it is also tied to mob actions or mob justice, if you should. I mean, I don't like justice because I don't see justice in this, but mm -hmm. mob actions. So collectively, they've come together and they have agreed that this is our enemy, and how do we get rid of it? So in their minds at the time, they felt, and I would not be surprised if there were even her direct family members in that crowd, who also thought that, oh yes, she's the reason why as individuals in our family, our marriages are not working, we are not able to have children, we are not getting jobs, we are not traveling abroad, so yes, get rid of her. So we need to, and these things are strongly rooted in religion or in faith. So we need to find a way, whilst we are talking about let the, the justice system prevail to seek justice, and that could also be one way of preventing, we need to connect with the mindset of people and try to diagnose or understand why and how we work around the issue of witchcraft accusation and open up the spaces. Why are the things that happen around us happen? Mm. If, for example, your health is failing, has it got to do with lifestyle? Has it got to do with the fact that you do not take your medical appointments? Or does it got to do with the fact that people don't even have hospitals to go to? So they have to find other ways to understand what is happening around them. But if you move it from the community level, uh, most of the people standing there also think they have individual experiences. We know of people who think their stepchildren, for example, are witches, and most often they are female children. We know people who think their stepmothers, their mothers, and their mother-in-laws. I think top on the list are mother-in-laws. <laughs> they are the number one biggest witches in the world. You can't take that from them. And then, so those mindsets continue to exist. We, and we, we are people who live in so much fear. We live in fear of things around us. If a fly hops by your nose twice, you begin to think that this might be someone who is on an errand to know your business. People sleep in their room and they can't make calls because they think that they are what hearing the spirit of something hearing. So there's a very, very strong belief in witchcraft or mm. supernatural forces as a country that if we want to ignore that and have conversation about accusation, we may be approaching the issue wrongly. Mm. We probably need to begin to, I remember in 2014, the Ministry of Gender, at the time when I worked there as a technical advisor, had a national dialogue 
on the issue about witchcraft accusation and we moved it away from the northern now savannah region and we looked at it as a country holistically we connected it to mental health issues when women are beginning to experience menopausal uh, signs and symptoms people begin to interpret that as witchcraft uh, manifestations so we opened the conversation very wide that what is it that makes us confident that people indeed are witches and then move it to what do you do when they are witches? So we, we are stuck somewhere. And we, unfortunately, our religious systems feed off that. They call people out in church and say, you are a witch. And they give them the microphone to accept and declare the things that they do that make them witch. Somebody will say, yes, they are witch. They are witches. But I think there's something wrong with that kind mm. of approach. But worse off, you call people and say, your mother is a witch. It's the cause of your inability to have children. And they go back home. And they're ready to fight their mothers. Mm. Their mother so, and we have said again, the intersection with gender is very strong. Very few men are with that. In fact, when men grow older, we see them as wise men. They are the wisdom part of the house or the yeah. community. And when women grow older, they are the witches and the source of harm. Mm. For our community. And it's interesting how we have our grandmothers uh, who are not necessarily living in the in the villages who are pretty old i mean we celebrate them as grandmothers and great grandmothers yes. and nobody does the accusations but i want to ask you on the back of what diana said mr Wetar, what's the legal justification for somebody tagging another person as a witch either in church or anywhere else of course there is no legal justification whatsoever no matter your belief you cannot project your belief in a way that would bring about harm to somebody. You can't do that. So what has been going on in the churches, in, in the communities, and all those places by people labeling people as witches, and for that matter, some, something must be done to them, they are actually abettors of crime. That ought not to happen. But we've seen that <laughs> happen even on live television. They broadcast what they do. We see it. I, Exactly, Mama. That is why I'm saying that we need to begin to reconstruct what we understand by the protection of people. You should protect people even from uh, harmful, hateful language that can lead to violence. So it is not enough for us to coil our hands and say, oh, but they are practicing their religion, so uh, it is for them to do what they want. No, 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 no. They cannot practice their religion in such a way that they, they either by the words they use, they create harm for somebody or invite harm to be done to somebody. That should not happen. That should not happen. But I think our major problem as a society is that we, we, <laughs> Let me put it this way. It appears we are so tied to our culture and tradition that we still need to do a lot to break that bond between us as a people and our so-called culture and tradition. And this is a culture and tradition sometimes which is not very uh, helpful to the people certain people, like women in particular. We are talking about the system of patriarchy. All these show that in a community where things, where, where things happen and there must be a cause, it is an old lady who is seen as a cause of the problem. We, we try to find a cause from within our patriarchal system, protecting men and the rich, in the, 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 the powerful, and putting all the blame for the ills of society on the poor, the vulnerable, and on women. These are things we need to break. These are structures we need to break, but it takes time to do that. Mm. And it's about time our security agencies begin to show by example. I'm sure if you prosecute three, four, five to 10 people, for what they have done in terms of lynching witches, it will serve as a lesson. People will sit up. Why should chiefs be protected if they have caused, they've invited people to come into your community to uh, solve a problem of, uh, you know, some ills that are befalling the community, and that leads to the death of somebody? 
the causation is direct. We need to begin to appreciate that the systems that we have in our communities are also part of the problem. Mm. We're going to be activating the four lines because we want people to join this conversation as well. So get ready to give us a call on 0302 uh, Madam Nkrumah, hopefully we have a better connection in terms of the sound. Uh, two issues, you know, the latest uh, with the action that the state is taking is the fact that, and it's been reported in the news today, that the IGP has dispatched homicide team to hunt the killers and also put a reward of 2,000 Ghana CDs on uh, any person that comes forward to give information that, that leads to the arrest of the people who murdered uh, Madame Ike Adente. But if you're accused of being a witch, either you're called out by a priest in the village or you're called out in church, what kind of support is there for you? I mean, at that point when it happens, yeah. uh, when you're doing the education, what can people do? Where, where can I turn to? Wow. Okay. So um, I think firstly, Dinah alluded to the fact about um, the creation even of these so-called witch camps. It was literally perhaps a place of refuge for witches who had somewhere to go to. That is not to say that witch camps themselves were ideal because um, there's a lot of research that shows that the witch camps were you know, in terrible or deplorable states and they had real issues with li life and living in there. And beyond that, even, we need to look at the extended family around some of these, these witches, where livelihoods are truncated. If you're a mother and perhaps you had children, it meant that your children most likely have to drop out of school. So the dimensions of this are far reaching. But where do you go when this happens? Granted, the Constitution gives you or protects you from these things. But these are the real issues that we need to begin to ask ourselves. What kind of social welfare interventions do we have that allow for um, the victims of such beliefs access to some level of protection, some level of care, and ensuring that they live in dignity, they have a livelihood, they are self-sufficient, and where it is physical or, or medical or mental, they have the state to grant them the needed medical attention to resolve these things. I think we have the structures. The question is whether the structures work. And sadly, in communities such as um, what happened in the um community, even though perhaps on paper these structures are there, they, they don't work. Or you would, would even find that sometimes where the structures work, the people themselves who work there hold similar beliefs. Yeah. Recently we had a situation where um, a police, there was an issue of, um, I think, a defilement of a young child. And the police who was supposed to be investigating this said, well, this is a matter between two and mentioned the ethnic you know, um, the ethnic groupings of these people. And so I don't want to get involved. Hmm. And in the middle of this was a young child who had been raped or defiled by someone. But the real issue then is how are our social welfare and social intervention structures working? I don't think they have been properly um, equipped to carry out their role. And I very much doubt that in that community, you would even find one day. Okay. So we this big conversation is how we and we we begin or we continue this con tied to this is how we continue this conversation by roping in what we consider as the loopholes and finding ways to um, address this. I'm sure in the past we have, but perhaps it hasn't been sustained. Mm. But this is really an important time for us to begin to bring a certain roadmap of closure to such events and change mindsets. And I think we, we also need to discuss the issue of development. At the heart of this really is development. Yeah, if and growth. Mm. Yeah. If it was a 
community where they had all the facilities, people were working, they had, you wouldn't find as much of this. But as um, my, my co-speakers have said, you, you find that this is happening in, in, a, in a community where there's a lot of vulnerable groups. Mm -hmm. And okay. they are going support right we, we we have to go on to the phone lines we we have from tamale uh hakim hakim good morning to you hakim yes good morning good morning uh, please uh, what will be your contribution to our discussion i'm sure you've been following yeah a lot the issue the issue has to do with um um, um deterrence and and culture with the cultural aspect you know I can tell you um, um, uh, without doubt that over 90 percent, over 90 percent of us in the North here believe in these things, irrespective of uh, the person. Is, uh, it, it, it doesn't matter the level of the person's education, PhD holders, people who are enlightened, people who should have known better. All of them have believed that there exist uh, these witches. So first of all, let's look at the education and mindset of our people. Because no matter what we do, if the people still believe that there exist witches, this things will continue. Mm -hmm. And the other thing has to do with enforcement. I am highly disappointed in the Ghana police service. There are issues happening. And within 24 hours, uh, corporate uh, or, or suspects are rounded out. In this particular case, how is it taking so long for the police service to effect arrest? You see, if anybody uh, condones uh, uh, what you call it criminality, that person uh, is, is, is as well a criminal. There is a chief in that particular community. What happened to the chief? Because if the chief knew that what they were doing, uh, 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 if the chief uh, hadn't sanctioned that particular, uh, what do you call it, execution, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have Well, been Hakim, right. we, can't, we can't go there because we don't know if the chief was uh, personally Complicit involved or not. Or not but yeah. we appreciate the comments that you've made. Really, really important there. Uh, you know, we, we, the fact that... Uh, and we all go to church. We all have our beliefs. Don't there are witches the and yeah. wizards. Uh, except that maybe we, we haven't been called out. So it hasn't happened to us. But that's the reality. Uh, the society believes in this, uh, in this witchcraft uh, phenomenon. So uh, how do we stop something that we believe? Or how do we prevent people from taking further actions from something that we all believe as a society? I guess that's, that's where the hurdle is. And I don't know if anybody wants to jump into it, but Abu is joining us from Wa. Uh, after Abu, I'll come back to you, and then you can have a say on that. Abu, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, sir. Thanks for joining us. You're on air. Let's hear you. Yes. Uh, this issue, I don't know what I, this is the first time people are hearing it. There, are, there have been a lot of issues like this going on. Well, this is not the first time. We're dealing with this particular issue with the 90-year-old. It's, it's just that this is the one that has been captured on TV. That's why people no. are it to be something, something big. Okay, Abu, I think I'll have to end you here. This is not the first time we're dealing with this matter. We're dealing with a specific issue of a 90-year-old, if we can be more specific and also appreciate that we've been talking about this matter for a very long time. I think it would be very helpful to all of us. Let's just hit it right there uh, on the head. Uh, so can you attempt answering the question that I just posed? It's something that we, uh, as a society, we all believe in. How do we get rid of it? Dinah? Well, uh, yes. <laughs> Mama, it's, it's really difficult, especially when a mindset is tied to faith or has religious ground, whether it's called traditional religion or whatever, it's really complex to deal with. That's why as a state, the state probably has approached it at multiple levels. The first level is we do not quarrel with you that you believe they are witches. We do not dispute the fact that you believe they are witches. It's OK to believe they are witches. But you should find other ways of dealing with that, other than picking stones and stoning them, other than setting their homes ablaze, other than killing them, that is not allowed. So if you do that, you've offended the law, and the law will kick in. That is why it is very de uh, uh, depressing that these people seem to be maybe getting away with it. And that is when it makes a whole nonsense of everything that you say that is not allowed. Because you said it's not allowed, I did it, and I mm. get away with it. We come back to point zero. Mm. However, 
we also need to, we talked earlier about development and the strong intersection between poverty and low education rate and the, the rate at which accusation comes in and the rate at which people react. For those who are a bit more educated, their re response to the same accusation that we all believe in is different than those who do not know a lot more about what the law say about this and that. So it becomes a problem. And the, the accusation is even more rampant in places where they can't explain the kind of health issues they are dealing with. They can't explain the kind of child or infant mortality that prevails. They believe that indeed there's that woman who has a black pot in some corner who is putting the children's neck in water spiritually and killing them. So if you reduce the mortality rates in those communities, you reduce their suspicion rates and you build a little bit more trust amongst themselves and they can live meaningful life. Okay, so thank you. So we need to address all those other things before we can make, but you just can't call people and say, don't believe in witchcraft, it's not going to work. Mm. All right, thank you. Let's take our last caller, Ryder. Or Rida. Okay, Rida. Rida from Tamale. Rida, thanks for joining us. Let's hear you. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, uh, with regard to the issue, I think I really agree with what uh, Abdul Hakim from Tamale said. We in the North, and we can also argue that the whole of Ghana believes in this witchcraft uh, business. But looking at it critically, also, there has not been any legislative system put in place to cater for how we deal with situations regarding this. We haven't put in place, if you go to uh, a place like Kenya, the Constitution has made provision. I remember uh, back about three years ago, there was a rule that no one, no which was allowed to fly above a certain uh, altitude. It means the Constitution, they have agreed with its existence and they have put in place rules that would protect the people in general. But in Ghana, we still adapt to the uh, Western Western Constitution. We treat our different society as if we don't have uh, these things within us or among us. And we, 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 we basically don't put in place rules that would uh, uh, prevent or protect people from these kind of abuses when, uh, when they are right. Mm. I also think that uh, the police are putting much emphasis on uh, just road traffic and then burglary. Mm. They don't concentrate on issues such as this. One of uh, the panelists was stating that uh, people have been abused in churches on live television. And nothing was done about it. This, 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 this is something that I witness every day. Sometimes I just tune into watch and then laugh. Because you look at it and you know that what this person is saying on live It's complete abuse. Mm. Well, right there. Mm. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Rita, uh, for your contribution. That he is the last, and um, it means we have to bring matters to a head. Now, um, Mr. Wittal, where do we begin from here? Look, we've seen that even us as individuals in, in the security services, in law enforcement, even in this so-called uh, quasi-judicial bodies are even complicit because of the belief we have in our minds. It's from the home. But where do we begin from here, knowing all the things that we've done in the past? Well, um, for me, I think the way forward would be, one, can the police begin to re-educate the, 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 the policemen and women differently beyond preparation for combat as to how to appreciate community problems that constitute a threat to human life and what to do. It's very critical. They are there, they are not just sitting at the police stations and sitting down to take complaints and investigate armed robbery and theft and bananas and, and others. No. Mm -hmm. It's also about making sure that we protect the life and integrity of the people in the community. That's how we should be going. For the mindset issue, all of us must begin to appreciate that you cannot, and I, I must agree, I mean, some of my colleague panelists made it clear that it takes time for belief to change. Even in the UK, they, they, they practice witchcraft from the 14th century until the 19th century. Mm. And so it took time for them to change. 
So we are getting gradually there, but we can hasten it by the deterrence that the, 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 the caller from Tamale said. We need to begin to be more proactive, particularly when law enforcement in the colonial period in <clears throat> through indirect rule was left in the hands of chiefs in the villages. Now, if you have taken away that power and you still have policemen who see, let me say, opinion leaders and chiefs as some uh, law enforcement, then there's a problem because they are sitting in conflict, uh, in a conflict situation. They are protecting customary laws that may be uh, like what we are discussing, uh, inimical to the rights of people, and also at the same time, supposed to ensure that justice is delivered uh, in the community. How does that happen? Mm. So the police must take their rightful place and, and make sure that policing goes beyond uh, the normal standard allegations that come to them that they take to court, mm. among others. Mm. Um, Madam Josephine Kuma, where do we go from here? I know that education will be critical, but beyond behavioral change, what do we do? Firstly, we do, we do accept that Ghana is a deeply spiritual um, nation. I mean, educated and non-educated alike have firm and deep-seated beliefs. But the Constitution is quite clear that your beliefs should not be the reason to cause the indignity of another person and there are real consequences for it. But I think that Madame Ekua Denteme, her soul rest in peace, her death should not be in vain. In fact, this should really spark and be the catalyst to, to accelerate the conversation that we are having to ensure that at the very least, whilst it takes a long time for us to resolve um, issues of belief, where the law acts as a deterrent, we should act hastily, swiftly, to ensure that perpetrators such as these are brought to book. I think that in itself also sends a signal to communities that no matter what your belief is, if it flouts any law, and particularly flouts the fundamental law of the land, where they cause somebody to suffer, you know, this inhumane act, you dehumanize somebody, then you must face the full rigors of the law. So I would expect that the Ghana Police Service, and I'm happy to hear that the IGP has sent a team there to carry out an um, investigation. I would hope that um, this investigation is carried out very quickly, perpetrators are brought to book, and it is made as visible mm. as possible and to serve as a deterrent. Okay. That is we can ensure justice for this woman and okay. ensure that we protect other people in the future. All right. We thank you for your time. We thank you for the analysis, the education, the insights that you bring to this conversation. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, Madam Josephine Nkrumah, Madam Diane Adiko, Mr. Joseph Wattel, we're grateful. Please have a good day. Thank you for joining us on this conversation. Uh, so there... There you have it. Uh, we've been discussing the legal angle, the societal. This is uh, a subject that's embedded. This is something that we live with. And it is our hope and prayer that even as this tragic incident has happened, it will open our eyes and we will move away from incidents such as these. This is not good. Not good at all. Doesn't say any good thing about us as an entire country. This is not a video that came from a little community in the north. This is something that's representing Ghana as a country. Anyone that sees it on the net will know where it is coming from. And we shouldn't allow ourselves to do this. Yeah. yeah. So, the, so the whole point is that it represents us. And exactly. if this is what is going to represent us, then that's not a good feeling at all. Good reputation. No, no, no. Well, that's where I guess uh, all of us who are very much um, in tune with this subject would also uh, want to get interactive and make sure you do that on our various social media platform. But next we have to tackle a sport that we all love. We're talking football, but this time the English uh, Premiership came to a head or a wrap over the weekend. That was on Sunday.
it was an exciting time, at least for those teams that nearly didn't qualify for Europe. They did uh, for the Champions League, and those that stayed for Europa too were there. But I want to do some analysis of this. Where are we taking football, uh, and not only European football, but also local football? And we have some good guests too. To yeah, we us. do. We've got our own Gary Al Smith and uh, Fifi Anaman and Jerome Autry, because we want this conversation to also... Uh, you know, linked to our own local league. What have we learned from what we've seen with the project restarts? That's a conversation that's coming up next. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. My name is Wiala, a.k.a. the Lioness of Africa. And this message is going to industry players, especially those who do the blogging, criticizing, and whatever. Please. KMJ or JNJ, and all, as some more do, and all your whatever, whatever. Yes, whatever, whatever doesn't mean I'm, I'm being rude, but to everybody. If I don't really count in this industry, or if I don't count, and I have never been counted as part of this industry, then don't discuss me when you are talking about the showbiz or show business in Ghana. You can't always mention my name and turn around, say, oh, shout out to Wiala, but she doesn't really count because she and her manager are just concentrating abroad, doing international stuff. Why won't I, uh, why won't I concentrate there? Why won't I do that? Why? And then the music industry is dead because Kaki, Ebony, and Miss V, all of a sudden, are no more doing music. You can always call them back, can't you? Since the rest of us, you, you think are not controversial enough, we are not showing skin enough, we are not insulting each other enough, we are not attacking each other enough so that you can get something to write. And then you can take us to the slaughterhouse or take me to the slaughterhouse, divide me into pieces, say all kind of manner of things about me or us so that you can have something to talk about. You think some of us are idiots, eh? We should come and fool because we want to win Artist of the Year. And then what next? What do we get from that? What do we get? In Ghana, there are no royalties. We don't get fuck all. So some of us might not be the most intelligent, but we do have brains to understand that when you do foolish songs, just because you want to get attention and win some few awards, you're actually fooling yourself. That's the lioness of Africa, Noella Wiala. Uh, she hasn't roared like this. Don't remember. She joins us live uh, for us to talk about why she's been so upset, quite upset with this matter. Uh, Noella Wiala, look at you. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. And you? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. But listen, tell us, tell us about why you went wild with this video. Well, I went wild because comments like she doesn't really count or she and her management have said, okay, here's a, a, we are leaving the industry for you, uh, has contributed to me not getting a lot of shows right here in Ghana. There have been so many occasions where people came in, especially people who came in from different countries and were looking for an act like myself to grace their occasions. And whenever they approach people, especially people who, who talk like Arnold Asamoah do, and, and the rest of the others that, uh, 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 that actually talk like him, will tell them, oh, Wiala, yeah, she doesn't do. And by the name, my name is not Wiala. It's Wiala. They'll say Wiala, yeah, but Wiala doesn't do her things in Ghana. For that matter, uh, this other artist does something closer to what she's doing, so book her or him rather. I've lost it because of this statement. Oh, we are like doing well, but she's not rated in Ghana, or she's underrated. Such comments have gone a long way to make people feel like I don't even care about the industry. So for that matter, when certain shows are being organized, they should even count me in because I don't care. Mm. And I know people who, after they have approached me, and those people too were as a result. Fortunately, even when they say that, those who come in from different countries, 
will still insist, no, just give us her contact. And they'll be like, yeah, we have her contact, but we are sure she's not in the country because mm. she doesn't do her things here. She, uh, she's not involved. I have lost gig because of these kind of comments. So that's what I'm saying. If I don't really come, don't, don't even sit on TV and discuss me because by discussing me, you are driving away potential clients who will probably come to Ghana looking for me to come and perform for them. Mm. But because of what they keep saying, I've lost out. So many of them told me that they had to insist and insist for them to give my contact to them. Then they'll mm. call me themselves. Mm. If not, they'll be telling them I'm, I won't be available because they know I don't, that I don't even live in Ghana. Mm. I live in Ghana. I've so we are in my hometown. Yeah. This is where I live. I only go outside there to perform when I'm invited. But yes. I, w I want to believe that I want to believe that this is not the first time that you've heard these comments about yourself, uh, and so I'm wondering why you decided to come out now. Because it gets to a point where enough is enough. Me keeping quiet doesn't mean I am afraid of anybody criticizing me, and or, or it was just because I didn't want to come out and talk. If not, it will be, it will, it will make me look like I'm angry or bitter. Mm. Or I'm taking things too personal, but it gets to a point when it starts in, uh, interfering with your with your li uh, your life and uh, putting food on your table and my brand and everything. Because if you keep quiet too much, there's a saying in my local language that hmm, that one alone can kill you. Mm. If everything you just go like hmm, everything hmm. This is why people commit suicide and we don't know because sometimes they just refuse to talk. I won't allow anybody to frustrate me. I've come from a very difficult uh, uh, beginning, like a lot of people, where it, it was very impossible. And I've managed to get to this level. Mm. I got into the industry. Nobody was giving me the time of the day. But I managed yeah. to finally even convince people to look at what I'm doing. And finally, I'm getting that uh, recognition uh, within Ghana. And then these comments keep coming up. Mm. You organize shows. And then people just say, we are like, doesn't involve herself in the industry like that she's concentrating abroad that line alone mm. will make me lose out and 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 it's not it, it, it's not cool maybe you should be happy that some of us are also out there representing ghana on the international scene we yeah. can all be local champions absolutely because i we it, can't all be local champions yeah also in the video you know you kind of make mention of the fact that always oh, because you don't do a lot of the things that other people do to get the kind of recognition that they get in ghana with the awards so you're not showing yeah. enough flesh you're not being controversial as in you're not fighting with somebody else in the industry i mean is, is that yeah. is that the sort of things that you're picking that you have to do in order for people to talk about you because me, sister, i talk about you even if you're not doing those things let me use the late ebony as an example they made her and they crushed her that's what has happened to ebony and Ghana, we are still back when it comes to entertainment. Let's be honest. The religious stuff, the traditional stuff, the cultural stuff, it's not easy for both male and female. I always say that the male, the male artists always put up a tough face with this attitude that men don't cry kind of attitude. That's what I'm learning from the males in this industry. They just have to put up a tough skin. If not, it's not easy for all of us. It's not a male-dominated industry. It's because the males have decided to be like, I'm a man, I'm a man, let me just take it like a man. That is what is happening. But women, we are in a different field when it comes to our emotions and the way we approach things. Mm. You see that? So uh, 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 it's very difficult. If not, gone are the days. Miss Bell did crazy stuff than Ebony. But look at the perception that they had for her. If not, she would have won things. How many years did it take her? For people to finally come to understand this is showbiz, so you can dress in a certain way just to entertain people. It was now in 2019. Uh, everybody came and did the same thing. And finally, they now accepted to allow uh, the females to be themselves. Mm. This is how long it has kept us. And you want some of us to come here and fool? But I, I just want to do that. I, I just want to finally ask you. Can they ever stop talking about you, whether positive or negative? The bloggers won't stop. For me, I don't say nobody shouldn't talk about me. But when you are talking about us, know that we are all hustling to do something for ourselves. Talk in a, in, in fact, criticize constructively, as people will say. But when you talk and you sit on TV, you talk about somebody, you want to use like two minutes to just discredit somebody. It's not the best. You're actually killing the person's career by thinking you are saying all this. Because all that he has said 
uh, 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 has really taken me out of the market within Ghana. It means nobody should even be thinking about me when they are doing shows here because I'm never here. Mm -hmm. Me and my manager have left the scene for them. And even to the extent that uh, uh, um, um, when I came to the uh, uh, to my village, I know when I talk like this, it might sound like personal, but I'm going to call out people. Because that time has come, if you don't say things, people think you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are just going to step back and allow them to bully you. Nobody's going to bully me. And this goes down to uh, everybody. And especially Adina's manager, Mr. Kwame Fachi. I didn't come to my community because my career has come to an end. I didn't come to my community because I've run out of money, or I didn't come to my community because my manager and I are owing people money, as we said some time ago, that I've come here to hide because my career has come to an end and there's nothing for me in Accra. Accra gave me a lot. Accra gave me the biggest uh, 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 um, um, popularity ever through the reality shows. Mm. Without Accra, there, there was no Vodafone icons in my village yeah. or my hometown. So I went to Accra to get something, and Accra gave it to me. So it was time for me to come back home and share. Okay. And you are there. Yeah, people like him, mm. all of them. All right, uh, well, yeah. we so are like, we... When, uh, I, I just want to say, I just want to say that, I mean, business. yeah, we appreciate I, that. I, I want to tell people like him that they shouldn't be doing that because because of that, Adina been calling me for all this collaboration and I'm not sure. You see that? Mm. That's why they say I'm not collaborating with what, what. So yeah. please, this is where all these things are going. It okay. makes us feel like... They're making us to fight each other, and we shouldn't. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's one thing I'm sure of. Uh, listen, I will not stop. We won't hear on Join You stop talking about the good things that you're doing. We know you're raising the, the Ghana flag really high. Thank you for opening up and talking to us. That's, Thank you for having us. Uh, absolutely. Noella, we are la there. And that really is a wrap for our show today. We thank you for your company. See you tomorrow, God willing.